It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. This is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. Before we get started, please hit that share button so we can educate more patriots around the country. All right, we're kicking things off with Reclaiming America with our counterculture mom, Tina Griffin. Tina, it's great to see you. Hey, great to see you, too. Do whatever we can do, right, Dr. Duke, to keep this flying high, that American flag, red, white, and blue. We've got some stories today. I want to start with the the unmitigated gall of uh, Hannah Jones, right? This is the woman, Nicole Hannah Jones, who gave us this ridiculous 1619 Uh, curriculum. Now, just by way of background, the 1619 curriculum was largely made up by her. It is completely ahistorical. I mean, serious scholars on the left of history had commented on how what bad history this is. Quietly, many liberal historians are trying to correct correct how bad this is. She is has no degree. She's never been a teacher. She has no degree in curriculum, writing curriculum. And so she's trying to bully her 1619 curriculum, which looks at American history for 400 years exclusively through the lenses of race and racism and slavery, Uh, reducing all American history and social studies to the discussion of slavery and the evil of the founding of this country. So that's who she is. I'm going to now play the video. Can't wait to get your take on what she has to say as a mom. I don't really understand this idea that parents should decide what's being taught. I'm not a professional educator. I don't have a degree in social studies or science. We send our children to school because we want them to be taught by people who have expertise in the subject area. And that is not my job. When the, when the uh, governor or, or the candidate said that he didn't think parents should be, be deciding what's being taught in school, he was panned for that. But but that's just the fact. Um, this is why we send our children to school and don't homeschool, because these are the professional educators who have the expertise to teach social studies, to teach history, to right. teach science, to teach literature. And I think we should leave that to the educators. Yes, you, you should have some say. But school is not about simply confirming our worldview. I don't know if I should laugh, cry, or punch a hole through a wall at this point, if I can just be honest. This is why we are losing America. Do I have hope for this nation? I do. But as a very concerned person and parent in this country, this is why I am currently educating my kids at home under our roof. Because we want to make sure at the Griffin household, our kids know the truth about how our country was founded, Dr. Duke. And I know there's other options out there, but it's few and far between these days when you have people like this, that my number one question, why does she even have a say? Why does she even have a microphone? Why is she on TV? Of course, we know mainstream media and they're trying to hammer home the lies. So that's why she's on there. How much is she getting paid? Who is she connected with? She is the one that is causing the racism. She is. A majority of America love each other. Kids, They don't look at the color of each other's skin. That doesn't even cross their mind. But what are we seeing now because they're being indoctrinated with this deadly, deadly, toxic poison on school grounds? We see stories like what I just saw and woke up to this morning. A young man who was a a coach for some sports team at a a local school and a bunch of middle school students beat the heck out of him in the middle of a school parking lot and broke his arm. All different color races. But my question is this. Is this the garbage on school grounds being taught to, cons- to cause our young kids to actually go out and commit crimes, attack their very own teachers, think that they have a power to do so, no consequences as a result? This woman is a reason why America is struggling the way it is. These people do not need to have a voice. And I'll tell you, it's even worse than that, I think. You heard her. She just said that she's not a teacher. She doesn't have a degree in teaching. She has no experience in teaching. She has no experience in teaching social studies. And yet her 1619 program, she's bullying it into American public schools. She is coaxing and making a lot of money from schools who are replacing actual history books that cover complicated issues in American history, like slavery, from a number of perspectives. She's pushing those out of public schools and her guard curriculum is being replaced the it's the the absolute 
complete cluelessness of these people. Only teachers and educators should be allowed to talk about what we do in school. If that's true, why does big Black Lives Matter have their big fat nose in what's going on in schools across the country? If you don't want parents yeah. in, then you certainly don't want Black Lives Matter in, which was a, a Marxist ideological movement full of non-teachers. That's exactly it, Dr. Duke. And with the video footage that I'm getting sent from parents around this country, their children that they're paying tax dollars to send to a school every day to get actual factual truth are instead of learning math, if they are taught math, it's now, you know, the, the common core garbage where you can't even do a math problem. Anything goes. There's no final answer. Whatever you want it to be can be, which is insane in itself. They're being taught how to run a Black Lives Matter protest outside of their school at the ages of five, six, and seven years old. They're taught how to actually divide and have more racist rhetoric on the school grounds and outside the school grounds while being taught these tactics in school during school hours with our taxpaying dollars. We are the only people that should decide what goes into our children's brains at these schools, but these schools are run by primarily communist backed, government backed, illegally backed um, facade, and they are deciding what kind of classes are going into these students around this country and indoctrinating them with this kind of garbage. We cannot send our kids any longer, Dr. Duke, to government backed schools. We have to homeschool. And I was gonna ask you, besides homeschooling, the number one comment that I'll get from concerned parents Let's say they have a job, they uh, work outside of the home, they can't um, teach their kids a godly curriculum, truth from our country and the foundation of where we came from. What can we do if they don't want to send their kids to a government school and at the same time they can't right now feasibly homeschool? Do you have anything else to add to the mix that we could tell parents about this? Because I am really stuck. I don't want them going to a public school any longer. Are you a fan of the show? Consider joining the Patriot Club. Your tax-deductible donation of $99 a year keeps us going. Simply visit PatriotClub.us. That's PatriotClub.us to pledge your support and receive our signature tumbler as a token of our appreciation. We've got much more to come. Stay with us. All right, now back with Tina Griffin, uh, our counterculture mom. Tina, you asked me a great question before the break. What can we do to get parents help who can't pull their kids out of public school right away, can't afford to do it, they're not sure what to do? My response would be if you can't pull your kids out of public school, please take one hour every night with your kids, one hour, five days a week, and just spend time with your child learning what they learned, right? Find out what they heard about history today. Find out what they did about math and science. And when you hear a lot of the garbage that they're doing, spend the rest of the hour talking to them that there are more ways to see this. It's broader than this. Don't, don't believe this is all, the only thing that you're hearing is the right thing from your schools. Take a little time every night, one hour, just to deprogram them. I think that would help a lot in the short term. I, I think it would. You know what? By doing that, I think parents will be livid if they really understood fully what their kids are learning in the school classroom. Another option is your Freedom Project Academy. They can take that online. And I thought of it actually another one as we're talking. I have my older, my oldest son is 13, Jake. He's a self-taught learner at this point. So if you have older kids that can go through a curriculum, which my son has done within three hours because they don't, he didn't have to deal with the garbage going on with the drama in public schools today, bullying and talking in class where the teacher has to settle them down. They only get five minutes of instruction anyway. What you can now do is have the older kid help teach the younger kids in your house. That's what Jake does. He loves it. And it actually helps him learn how to be a leader and be a teacher. So there's ways around what is going on, but I just want to cry, Dr. Duke, when I think about the junk that these kids are learning in schools today, because it's all a communist plot, the same, the same communist tactics of the 45 goals written in 1958 of how to take over America, and they have taken over our schools. It's no longer can we save it, it's get your kids out, the, the building is crumbling down. Well, we do have some good news, Tina. There's this next story here out of Oklahoma, where Oklahoma is actually positing a bill that would give back to parents a lot of control when it comes to sexual, sexually explicit books in the classroom. Well, the grooming here is, is crystal clear. These books 
that is not the place to promote uh, these types of very sexual books to children. Senator Rob Standridge is the author of the bill. He says these types of books don't belong in school libraries, rather sex ed classes, where parents can sign off on having their child attend those classes. Parents never go there. So that's, that's I think, what parents are concerned about is uh, why are they not involved in what books are shown to their children in the library. Some of the books he mentioned parents across the state have complained about are Trans Teen Guide, Just Doing It, and the ABCs of Transgender. A lot of these are alternative lifestyles, but some of them are not. And so what I think parents are concerned about is the over-sexualization of their children. Uh, this belongs in a sex ed class. Of if passed, school employees who don't remove the books can be terminated. And if the book remains on the shelves after 30 days, parents who made the initial complaint, the district would pay those parents $10,000 a day. Parent and advocate for Oklahoma's children and educators, J.J. Burnham, says banning these LGBTQ plus books as well as other sexuality books are not the answer. We start talking about banning books, and I think we need to be uh, inclusive in our schools and make sure that, you know, kids have materials available to learn, to grow, and to explore. That, that's what we want in our schools. I get so sick and tired of idiots like that last fella. It is not your job to make my kid grow sexually. It is not your job to make my, feel, my kid feel comfortable about your transgender vision of the future. Your, and it's not banning book, you clown. It's not banning anything. It is taking age-inappropriate books out of little kids' libraries. My first thought after researching Hollywood for 20 years and being in Hollywood is that guy that's suggesting leaves sexually explicit books in libraries for children that are five, six, seven years old, what is he doing when he's in his classroom? What is he doing after school hours? Is he hanging out with children? Because the only people I can see that are that lunatic to be okay with the sexually graphic, disgusting content are the people that are engaging in it. Dr. Duke, this is such a serious thing. I've interviewed several people recently that the people that are endorsing this garbage in schools are the people that are running child pedophilia rings, the people that are abusing children, and we have to put a stop to it. Our kids are dying. They're having major STDs. They're having anxiety. They're getting pregnant at 12. They're committing suicide. We have rules number 25 and 26 from the naked communist W. Cleon Skousen that wrote in 1958 the, what's going on. Rule 25 and 26 that the Communist Party wrote that they want to overtake America are these two things that have already taken place in our country and we have to say no more. Break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography, obscenity in books magazines, motion pictures, radio, TV. Rule number 27, the goal number 27, present homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. That's why these people are shoving this junk in these schools, because they're working for the Chinese Communist Party. They're getting backed by major, major illegal corporations that should have never, countries, that should never have a say of what goes on in American schools. Parents, I just wanna encourage you with this, Dig in your child's backpack, find out what they're learning in classrooms, and I'm telling you, you will know that you do not want to sacrifice your child one more day by sending them to a toxic environment. Speak your mind, God will work through you, but we have to stand up for our kids, for our country, if we're gonna save this nation. Go to our app to get more information, counterculturemom.com. We're also doing a donor drive. So if you wanna donate to our cause, text the word donate to the number 55444. Every dollar is doubled. You can find all that info in counterculturemom.com and in our app, Counterculture your mom download it get it today's show is sponsored by clean start hand sanitizer for an odor free foam hand sanitizer that lasts two hours and provides 19 refills visit freedomproject.com slash clean that's k-l-e-e-n to order yours today All right, it's time for Trending Left. We've compiled some of the craziest social media content making waves across the internet for your viewing pleasure. We start with a school counselor who goes by the name Sarah Lynn. Sarah recently posted a video discussing how she indoctrinates elementary school kids about gender identity. Yet another reason why you need to get your children out of these public schools. 
I teach my elementary school students about gender identity. Learning about gender identity helps children develop critical social emotional skills such as self-awareness, social awareness, and respect. I teach my students that there's a whole spectrum of gender identities and that everyone, whatever their gender, deserves love and respect. Some people are girls, some are boys, some are both, some are neither. Gender is all about how we feel on the inside and how we express ourselves. The most important thing I teach my students is that it's our job to listen to and learn from people when they share with us who they are, and that we need to use the name and the pronouns that people ask us to use when we refer to them. Here are some of the books and tools that I found the most useful when teaching about gender identity. Just waiting for one, just waiting for one elementary school, preschool teacher to talk about actual reading, writing, and math. Speaking of special people, let's head to Wisconsin, where the UW-Madison Physician Assistant Program is looking for new applicants for nursing as long as their life experience aligns with the college's mission. What do you think that means? Well, in order to move to the front of the line and have a chance to become one of these candidates, you need to be an underrepresented person in medicine. You need to be from a health profession shortage area or medically underserved area community. You have to be a veteran currently serving National Guard or reserves. You have to be from an economically disadvantaged background and you have to be a first generation college student. So nursing now depends not on your ability to do courteous, efficient, empathetic medicine. It depends on everything else. Let's head south to Elgin, Illinois, where we find evidence that at least one 10-year-old student was locked in a room for simply not wearing a mask. You see, Illinois's Democrat governor has lifted the face mask requirement for all adults, but children, little kids, must still wear them until Democrat polling, apparently, numbers drop so low. Take a look at this. It is the law by Governor Pritzker to let me out of this room. You can't lock me in a room. You can't lock me in here. Please let me out. Some idiot adult on the other side of the room pushes the boy back into the room when he tries to get out. Good for that little kid. That little kid filmed it. So guess what? The school now just can't figure out how this happened. And they're, they're kind of sorry. Next, we head to a Santa Barbara Unified School District meeting in California, where in honor of Black History Month, the high school jazz choir, made up of all white kids except one, performed the Black National Anthem to images of defund the police and Black Lives Matter protests. This is what indoctrination sounds like, folks. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies going to dawn on the geniuses in California that an all-white jazz troupe is about as appropriate as an all-black swim team. Finally, we wrap things up in the Badger State again, where Wisconsin State Representative Lee Snodgrass says that there's simply no place for parents that want to say in their children's public education. She tweeted, quote, if parents want to have a say in their children's education, they should homeschool or pay for private school tuition out of their own family budget, unquote.
Ah, another clueless Democrat in office who doesn't realize that property taxes and real estate taxes go to fund the same stupid schools she supports, the public schools. And that wraps up this segment. More nonsense, a lot more to discuss next week. It's time for some real education. All week we've been showcasing our Heroes of the West animated series. These five minute videos are designed to educate children and adults alike on some of the greatest men and women who left their mark on Western culture. Today, we take a look at William Shakespeare himself. Enjoy. If someone asked you to combine literary, dramatic, and poetic achievement into the person of just one artist, that figure would surely be William Shakespeare. The influence of this mysterious playwright, poet, and expert student of human nature is quite unique in the history of human experience. Born in 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon, England, Shakespeare had a good grammar school education that gave him the tools he needed to write his plays, including command of the English and Latin languages, and a familiarity with the great classical and Christian authors of history. In 1582, 18-year-old Shakespeare married 26-year-old Anne Hathaway. The couple had three children, Susanna in 1583, and twins, Hamnet and Judith, in 1585. 11-year-old Hamnet died of plague in 1596 and was buried in Stratford. By 1592, Shakespeare had made a name for himself on the London stage. His career as a writer, poet, and entrepreneur exploded. In the England of Queen Elizabeth I, the Elizabethan age, writing successful plays did not necessarily make an author rich or famous. And many plays were never published by Elizabethan playwrights themselves. Rather, plays made money based on the sales of tickets. And Shakespeare wisely became a shareholder in the Globe Theatre, which meant he made a percentage of every ticket sold. By 1594, Shakespeare's company of actors was sponsored by the powerful Lord Chamberlain, which guaranteed the actor's security and protection. After the death of Queen Elizabeth in 1603, King James I of Scotland became King of England and took Shakespeare's acting company under his personal protection, naming them the King's Men. The plays he wrote in the early 17th century, including Hamlet, Othello, King Lear, Macbeth, The Winter's Tale, and The Tempest, earned him lasting fame and offered profound insights into human nature while showcasing his evolving genius as a poet. Somewhere around 1611, Shakespeare said his goodbyes to London, moving back home to Stratford. Despite his retired status, he collaborated on a few other plays before becoming ill with an unknown sickness in 1616. After writing his last will and testament in a very shaky hand, William Shakespeare died on or about his birthday, 23rd April, 1616. Shakespeare's impact on the English language was unforgettable. His achievement as a poet, immortal, and his work as a playwright, unparalleled. Today, English speakers across the globe repeat every day in casual conversation many of the words and phrases he invented, often without even realizing their origin. The very name Shakespeare has become a synonym for literary genius. If you have ever been told that love is blind, or you've found yourself in a pickle, then you are speaking Shakespeare. If you've been on a wild goose chase or been attacked by the green-eyed monster or are as pure as the driven snow, you are speaking Shakespeare. Or if you've seen better days or bidden someone good riddance or felt the need to be cruel to be kind or possessed a heart of gold or tried to break the ice or killed with kindness or had too much of a good thing, then you are speaking Shakespeare. And if you find Shakespeare's language too difficult and simply walk away because it's all Greek to you, then you're speaking Shakespeare too. In fact, Shakespeare has been credited with inventing more than 1,700 common words, which adds up to more than 20,000 when parts of speech are compounded. But of all the words used or created by Shakespeare, none appears more than love. More than 2,200 times, Shakespeare invoked the word love. Today, Shakespeare is the best-selling fiction author of all time, with an estimated 4 billion copies sold. 
Hollywood has filmed his plays more than 500 times. Hamlet alone has been adapted for the big screen 79 times. And the famous to be or not to be soliloquy translated into more than 75 languages. At his death in 1616, he left behind 38 plays, from comedies to tragedies to histories to romances, in addition to four poems and 154 sonnets. As his famous contemporary, the playwright Ben Jonson, wrote in a poem of praise, Shakespeare was not of an age, but for all time. I want to take a moment to thank our Patriot Club members for making these videos possible. Their financial support provides the resources to bring these incredible stories to life for all to enjoy. In fact, we have a dozen more scripts ready to produce. All we need are some finances to help us make it a reality. If you're not already a uh, Patriot Club member, please consider joining our club with a $99 tax deductible gift to help us continue producing our Heroes of the West series. And if you were a Patriot Club member last year, thank you. Please consider signing up again for this year. And all you got to do is go to patriotclub.us to get started. Thank you very much. And that's going to do it for this show. I'm Dr. Duke. Until next time, stay educated, my friends.